Hello, this is Eve Star with Eve Star Fiber Arts. This is uh, April 23rd, Monday, on a very chilly day. Started out the day real nauseated, so I'm finally getting moving now. It's 3 o'clock. <laughs> Typical lately. But anyway, I was wanting to show you how this scarf was coming along. I did a little mini photo tutorial, but um, tomorrow I should be in town, and I'll be uploading the full-length tutorial on YouTube and... Um, clips of it elsewhere like my Instagram Eve Star Fiber Arts well Eve Star Eve dot star dot Malay and then on uh, Facebook too. But this is your first peek at the um, indi painted indigo bunting scarf. Now this is a series of scarves I'm doing based on I've unwound the warp a little bit to show you. Based on um, Arkansas birds and we've been seeing some beautiful goldfinches. I saw uh, a plain indigo bunting yesterday and today. They're small but incredibly beautiful. Very blue. And so I've been studying birds that I've seen in our yard and that pass on through. And this is the painted indigo bunting. And I showed you the warp the other day that this warp is actually all these different colors because a solid warp for some very colorful birds would just be a little bit too too dull. But they're all the same kind of yarn this time. Those are all um, thin, uh, strong cotton yarns. There aren't any blends or anything in there. Just cotton. Uh, this is going to be a very thin, light summer scarf. As you can see, my latest color I'm working with is this blue cotton. It's m kind of a really intense uh, royal blue. It has a little bit of violet in it. So I'll start backwards then. Oh, first of all, I've never shown y'all these. I'll go in more detail later, but I mark every six inches because on a project like this, I've got three scarves, 24 feet plus of warp. And if I lost track of where I was, I could end up with a couple of really long scarves and one short one or whatever. So I always keep track, uh, not only by marking it this way, I just slip it through with a crochet hook to something every six inches. Uh, but I also keep a, a little chart on a clipboard next to me that tells me whether I'm 6, 12, 18, 24, etc. So I know how far in I am. Because once it's wound on the back beam, you don't really see it. I don't usually unwind them like this. So I have the challenge of making this very gaudy bird. And it's been a lot of fun. That violet is the head. This chartreuse is on the back. And then the underside is kind of peach ranging up into bright red, so I'm going for it. So as you can see, I have incorporated my hand-dyed, hand-spun stuff like this right here with uh, some I had left over from a, a really pretty mossy scarf that I made, uh, a Bathsheba's knot, it's like a Solomon's knot. And then here we've got a clasped weft. That's where uh, I've got two shuttles going at the same time, and um, they're I'll, I'll go into detail sometime about that, but in, in this case, I did the, the darker green and the lighter green. I did a warm and a cool green. And then to marry that with the next section, I added some of my hand spun. Then this is a tape made of cotton and wool, which is made by Colonette in Wales, and I just love it. Yes, from all the way from Wales. And here we've got a bright, uh, we've got a light peach going into a bright orange, Going into like a watermelon red, that's a hand spun I did. Into a darker red, that's one of mine as well. And then into a silk yarn that I spun, that's like a pure blood red. Then we've got this very bright aqua cotton. I didn't spin that. And then um, we morphed into this darker blue by taking turns and using that clasped weft idea again. So that we're blending one into the next. This is mine as well, my hand spun. And then here is where we started. That's why I can't pull it any further. This is the silk scarf scrap that I put under there. To It covers the knots and it keeps the scarf from sticking together when I wind it on. And because my warp is so long on this little loom, I've been using thin tissue paper to separate it. So this is how we began. That's my, um, this is what I call a header. I think some other weavers call it that too, but I'm not sure what everybody calls it, but... It is a tighter, uh, more dense piece of work. It helps to glue the rest of your weaving together. I do that on the edges as well. And I might have a tutorial where I show you how I keep my edges really straight despite using thick and thin yarns. 
Uh, I've got a little trick I came up with just from playing around uh, that I haven't seen anybody else do it. So I'll show it to you guys. And of course, my direct warping method is something that my husband and I came up with. I haven't seen anybody else do that either. But anyway, this is scarf number one of three. And it's looking good and gaudy, isn't it? And it's going to be a wonderful summer scarf. It's only about four, four and a quarter inches wide, which is just right for summertime with the air conditioning and stuff. I might do a beaded fringe or I might do a twisted fringe. I'll know when I'm done. It's the kind of thing, you know. I'll look at it, give it a wash, see, see how it's feeling, and then go from there. But I'll show everybody how it ended up. And I'm very pleased with it. So this is probably going to be the wildest one I do. Uh, the other two will be um, birds that have a lot of red in them, but not necessarily all red. I mean, I might do a cardinal if I can. It's just going to be awfully hard sticking to one basic color. I'll have to just do every shade of red imaginable. And here is my sycamore tree. Look how happy that is. So even though it's a gray and chilly today, again, everybody says this is the latest spring ever in this area. Still, the bees don't like it, which is great. We've had a wasp issue. There's one reason it's been taking me longer to get out and show y'all what I'm doing. So we have to resolve the wasp issue humanely. But meanwhile, everything's looking, greening up and getting real thick and woodsy again. So, um, like I said, this is scarf number one of three. Sorry to move the, the camera around so much. I'm working on it. And it uh, looks like we're kind of getting a full spe spectrum in here. But that is just how gaudy the painted indigo bunting is. You might check it out online. I, I found it on Audubon. So, uh, this quick little update and soon-to-be tutorial comes to you from our little Ozark homestead. The friends and family and uh, other weavers and spinners and dyers. I say, see y'all soon.